Hi, we continue 8.4 diagnostics. So the, in this video, we study leverage and influence. So these are to detect unusual observations. So in linear models, remember that the leverage, the h sub i for the ice observation is defined by the i ice entry of the hot matrix h. H is defined by x times x transposed, x inverse x transposed. So you can see that the, this, the last part, if we multiply by y, this is beta hat. So that means H is, if we multiply it by y from the right hand side, this becomes x beta hat. So this is fitted value. So this HI measures how far away the predictor values of the observations are from majority of the data. So the basic idea is that the HY is fitted value. So that means the Y minus HY, mm, rather the HY, so the II's entry of HI, so HII, so we define this as HI. So this means the uh, how ice observation matters to determine the estimated observation, ice observation. So that means if one value is very extreme and the one value is very influential, then that observation determines its own response values. So if the one value is not extreme, then other observations can predict that response. But the one observation is very extreme, then we need that observation itself to explain the response of that observation. So that means the large HI means the um, HI, usually the um, XI, the predictor value is far away from the majority of the data points. So it's important to determine its own um, fitted value for the response. So a large HI has a potential to have a large influence to the regression line. For GLM, that we need a slight modification to this formula. And actually the H um, is given by a similar formula, but here it involves the sum matrix W. So if W is diagonal matrix, then it cancels and the, um, in total, but the, um, if the W is not, then, so if, if W is, sorry, the, if W is the identity matrix uh, times some constant, then it cancels, but if not, that we have slightly different result. And the W also depends on the <laughs> estimate, the beta hat, and the mu hat and the eta hat. So it also depends on y, but the idea is similar. So uh, still the basic idea is if observation is extreme and it has potential influence on the regression line, then hi is large. <coughs> so based on this hi that we have another residual uh, so-called standardized residual, uh, studentized residual. So that is denoted as R sub SD. So this is the R, the deviance residual, the divided by square root of the phi hat. So this is basically the variance parameter. And times one minus HI. So if the, it has large influence, then larger HI. So the standard deviation um, is actually smaller and that we divide the, that by one minus HI so that the, this becomes larger. Yeah, so the, a point of large influence that it has actually the lower, I mean the smaller absolute, smaller residual in absolute value because the, that observation is influential to the regression line. So that artificially that makes fitted value the closer to the um, actual response. You can see if we have many observations and one is very influential, then it affects regression line. So that means the fitted value is artificially the close to the observation. 
So we have to divide this by a small number so that the standardized one is large enough. Yeah, and the another, the residuals is defined by the yi minus mu i superscript i. So this is basically the yi hat, but the calculated based on other observations. So we have the first observation up to i minus first observation and i plus first, first observation up to n observation. So we just exclude i, then we use the, these observations to estimate yi hat. So that is denoted as the yi hat superscript i or um, equivalently the mu i superscript i. So in this way, the, we can evaluate um, how this observation is extreme. Because to predict yi, the fair way is the, to exclude this observation and the, um, predict this with the other observations. And if the difference, the residual is large, that means the, that point is not following the trend of other observations. So that means that that observation is extreme. Of course, the, this takes uh, more time to calculate because for each observation, we have to repeat a similar regression, actually the same regression with the, just one observation excluded. So there are uh, some formulas to approximate this Rj sub i, and the one formula is introduced in this um, as this one. And the studentized residuals, studentized, that means the residual follows t distribution approximately. So that's why it's studentized. Student means the t, t distribution. And that can be obtained by the R student of the, this GLM object. Then we can get these numbers. <clears throat> We can see that the largest observation, largest residual is here. And the, this is the prediction for the observation with the lowest expected probability and also actual probability. Yeah. And the at the end, at the, you know, the if the probability is closer to zero or closer to one before inverse link function discrepancy is large. So that we have this 30, maybe this is two over 30, then two over 30, and the, we have the small discrepancy, but the, this discrepancy is actually large in terms of the, um, this predictor values. So that's why that this observation is larger. And in the middle, the often that these um, residuals are small in absolute value. And also that this is the H sub I, the leverage. So leverage is actually higher on both ends. That is natural, but actually not much difference. So it's pretty good in terms of HI. No observation has large leverage. So lower risk to be influenced by a specific observation. So this is the coefficient. So this is intercept, so beta zero. And estimation excludes the one observation. So for example, first line, we exclude one observation. So this is the estimation result. with first observation excluded. Excluded. And second one is second observation excluded and up to fifth observation excluded. And you can see, mm, yeah, maybe the first one is slightly different from others in terms of question for the concentration. 
So the DS is a pretty small value, but the DC is large value, 0 0.08. Others are ranges, other ranges basically from negative 0 0.05 to maybe zero, maybe 0 0.01, but the DC is large 0 0.08. So it's slightly extreme. So the, we can see that the first observation is probably somewhat different from other observations in terms of trend. And also that this influence function reports sigma. So sigma is the residual standard error. If one observation is to be specific, ice observation is excluded. From estimation. So, okay, we can compare these values and you can see this is smallest. So that means if we exclude first observation, then other four observations are easy to explain with this generalized linear model. So that means the first observation, there may be some extreme value or outlier. And the deviance residual and the Pearson residuals are also reported in this influence function, but we have already studied it. So we just omit this. And also we can check the Cook's distance. So Cook's distance means um, calculates how much the each observation affects the estimates of beta. So basically the, um, this is the norm, the size of the beta hat when ice observations are excluded minus the beta hat, which is estimated by all observations. And some weight matrix here and some normalizer. And if we calculate this, actually the, you can see that the first observation have the largest Cook's distance. So that means the first observation affects the coefficients a lot or first observation is a little off trend compared to the other observations. So in these ways that we can detect outliers and the extreme observations, the Cook's distance and also the leverage, the HI and the real impact on coefficients and also the impact of the, on the um, residual standard error. Yeah, so from these observations, um, we can see that the first observation probably is the most, uh, I mean, relatively more extreme than the other observations. For a larger data set that you can really see the clear problems on the specific number of observations. 